Welcome to video number four in our cybersecurity master course. Today, we are going to perform some vulnerability analysis. We are working for Bob with Bob's Hardware Store. Last video, we ran Nmap and we saw some issues there with some scripts we ran. So let's dive a little deeper and run an actual vulnerability assessment against Bob's most critical PC. In order to do this today, we're still using Kali Linux, but we're going to install OpenVos. OpenVos has been bought out by Greenbone, so it's actually called Greenbone Vulnerability Management at this point, but I still refer to it as OpenVos, which a lot of you are probably familiar with as well. So let's jump right in and get that installed. All right, if you're following along, you already have Kali Linux installed, so go ahead and crack open a terminal, and we're gonna start the installation. So do a sudo apt install openvos you'll have to provide your password since this is a sudo it'll tell you right there that it's now called gvm or greenbone vulnerability management so that only takes a second to pull that down once that's done this part will take a little longer you're going to do a sudo space gvm dash setup this will take some time i've sped this up quite a bit with a little power of editing and now we're back all right, now we need to validate that setup. So do a sudo space gvm dash check dash setup. This is gonna go through and validate everything, including the Postgres database and stuff like that. So right there, it says everything seems like it's okay. So now you're gonna do a sudo space gvm hyphen start. This will get everything running if it's not already. And then by default, this is gonna be uh, running on port 9392. So crack open a browser, go to localhost colon 9392. This is where I ran into issues, guys. Not gonna lie with you or lie to you. I struggled with this for longer than I'd like to admit. Um, everything I read online is supposed to be a very easy command line to create and or reset the password for the default user. Uh, backing up a step, supposedly the default password is just default credentials are just admin admin. That did not work. So I ran through these different commands. Uh, I ran it once here without sudo, so obviously it's going to tell me I need to run it with sudo. So I went ahead and did that, ran the same command again with sudo, and this is basically to reset the password for the user admin. Uh, it took it, didn't throw any errors, um, but I still couldn't log in. I tried restarting services. I tried recreating that account using the command line. I tried rebooting. Anything I did, I just could not log into the web UI. Uh, so I spent way more time than I should have on this. Long story short, I have a solution for you guys so you don't have to bang your head like I did. We're basically going to go straight to the Postgres database and run some uh, DB commands against that database to get that user's password reset. We're going to go straight to the source. So we'll fast forward and pick up when I get there. All right, three Tylenols later from banging my head against the wall, we go straight to the database. So sudo space dash u space postgres space psql space gvmd. This will drop us into our database mode here. We're going to run this command. Feel free to pause. It's basically update users set password equals crypt. And then in quotations, you're going to say, I'm sorry, in parentheses, you're going to say it unicorn or whatever you want your password to be, right? And then gen underscore salt, parentheses, quotes BF, and your parentheses, and then you're gonna say where name equals admin, which is that default admin account. When you're done with all that, do a backslash Q, that'll quit you out of the database mode, and then go ahead and restart those two services, GVMD and the other one that you saw on the screen there. Now we should be able to log in. And voila, there we go. I spent way too much time on that, guys, but... Eventually we got in. That's all that matters. And hopefully this video saves someone else some time out there. If I did something wrong and there's an easier way to do that, please let me know because I got pretty frustrated setting that all up. All right, we're in now, guys. So what we need to do is set up a scan for Bob and his network. In this case, it's only one target. So we do need to go into configuration and set up our targets. You can do this for a whole subnet, multiple subnets, whatever you want to do. But obviously this is a uh, demonstration so we're going to do bob's hardware and our target or our host in this case will be that single ip address for bob's most critical asset his main pc so we'll punch in the ip address there it's 192.168.40.128 obviously put in whatever you're using for your target device there you have some options for the port list. I'd recommend just leaving this uh, all IANA assigned TCP and or you can do all 
TCP and UDP. It just might take a little bit longer for the scan, but if you're doing one target, it's not gonna be too bad anyways. All right, you have some additional options there. Feel free to plug that in if you wanna do a credentialed scan. You can plug in the um, credentials. There are good use cases for that. Like if you had a bad actor internally and they had credentials already, what could they do? Things like that. All right, so next we're gonna go to tasks and we're gonna add a new task and then we'll give it a name here, Bob's Hardware, scan. And now that we have a target configured, we will select that target Bob's Hardware PC. We'll run it once. This will not be a scheduled scan, but that's where you could set that up. If you wanna run this every week or something like that, I'd recommend doing the full and fast scan config. And then for the scanner, you have a couple options, the open VOS default, and then you do have a CVE option there. I just recommend using the open VOS default. When you're ready, click save there. And now your scan is configured. It's not doing anything though, until you actually run it since we didn't build a schedule for it. All right, so click on the little play button there. That'll start the scan. We'll give this a little bit of time. Shouldn't take too long with only one host. And then we'll come back and we will review the results. All right, that took a few minutes to complete, but it's done. So now let's jump in here and see what we found. All right, click on scans, and then you're gonna go to reports. Go ahead and click on the date for that report. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do here is download this report. Click on that little download link there at the top ribbon and then select PDF, unless you want a different format, but I would recommend a PDF just because most customers are gonna have something they can access this with. Give it a second to download and it should automatically open. Now you have a nice PDF scan report. You can go ahead and save this, email it to Bob or whoever your customer may be. You also wanna archive this as part of your overall assessment and or penetration tests, whatever you're performing for the customer. This gives you a nice little executive report and then it drills down into the different vulnerabilities that were found. So obviously we've only scanned one host here, but it does do a good job if you have multiple hosts, it'll give you results per host. And as you see, we have those three, or actually four, but we have three that are tens as far as the CVSS scores go. So it'll give you a little summary of each vulnerability. It will give you the vulnerability detection result, the impact, the solution. It'll give you the affected operating systems, uh, the vulnerability detection method, and then some references. So it gives you all of these CVEEs. So as part of the penetration test, if you wanted to exploit any of these vulnerabilities, you would be referencing those CVEs. So the report is a really good piece of material or document for the customer, but I do like to go to the uh, UI, go to scans and results. We can kind of slice and dice from here. Probably not something you would show to Bob or your customer, but a very nice graphical representation of the results of the scan. Again, only one host, but this would be a lot more informative if we did a whole subnet or even a whole company, right? So here we see the breakdown and it'll show us per computer, the IP address, the name of that computer, and then we can add filters there at the top. For example, I did a severity equals 10. So these would probably be the ones that you wanna address immediately. So I'm gonna focus on those when it comes to performing the actual pen test and exploiting some of these vulnerabilities, but just a nice graphical representation of what we're up against here. So again, that was under scan and results, and then we can play around with those filters and you can click into each one of the discovered vulnerabilities to get additional information on that. Okay, so offline, I did send the report over to Bob. Like I said, he's an older gentleman, not super tech savvy, still running Windows XP, so that should tell you one thing right there. However, he doesn't really believe us. He's not super convinced that this is a big issue. I showed him the big red uh, marks here that say CVSS 10. That's a pretty bad score on the common vulnerability scoring system. He says, ah, this thing's been running for years. I never had any issues. Why should I do anything about it? So what he wants me to do, what he wants us to do as a team here is go ahead and do a demonstration of us exploiting these vulnerabilities and showing him what damage could be done on his system. So in order to do that in the next video, we're gonna take some of the information that we gather here, including what we're looking at on the screen, the vulnerability insight and the related CVEs for one of these 10, rated 10 on the CVSS scale vulnerabilities. We're gonna exploit probably two of these in the next video. And we'll dive a little deeper into how to do that and what the impact is at the beginning of that video. And then we'll go ahead and use Metasploit in the following video to go ahead and 
get a reverse shell. I'm guessing that's most likely what's going to happen at the Merterpreter level. And then we'll do a little damage to Bob's, but we'll back things up beforehand. Uh, but we'll give him a little scare, hopefully shake him up so he takes this pen test and this vulnerability assessment more seriously. All right, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give this a thumbs up if you got any value out of it. And hopefully, I really do sincerely hope that someone benefits from the uh, information I gave you as far as installing OpenVos, uh, more specifically getting that password set in OpenVos on Kali. All right, guys, I hope you all have a great day. Please share this with your friends if they're into InfoSec at all. And uh, give me some feedback. What else you want to see in the series? I do have plans for the next several videos. So we're going to kind of keep this rolling and we'll go from there. But we got to look out for our buddy Bob because he's in big trouble. All right, guys, have a great day. Until the next video, everybody, take care.